I'm getting full dentures at 36 years old. If you want to find out how gastric bypass surgery destroyed my teeth, stick around. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely want to find out. So this uh, channel this week or today that we're going to be talking about is Bariatric Fitness. I couldn't get this girl's name, but I can tell you one thing. She is super duper talented. Listen, she's going to tell you about her experience with bariatric surgery and kind of some warning signs. So let me hit play. Guys, my dentist called me and said they had a cancellation and could take me in tomorrow for my dental surgery instead of November 30th. So tomorrow at 930, I go in, I get all of my teeth taken out. They're going to shave down the bones. They're going to take out the two bones under my tongue that are called the tori so that the dentures can lay flat on the bottom. I'm getting IV sedation, which is called twilight sedation. So I don't have to be fully awake, but I'll still be able to move my body and be conscious, but hopefully don't remember any of it. Because let me tell you, I am terrified of the dentist. Now I know what you're thinking. Sure, I grew up, I didn't take care of my teeth. I ate too many sweets. There could be a list of reasons that you're probably thinking is why these chompers are not good. But let me tell you the top two things that have destroyed my teeth as an adult. The first was gastric bypass surgery. So you may not know, but in 2015, I had gastric bypass surgery. Now, don't get me started. I can go into a whole nother video about why I regret the surgery, why it only works the first year without you having to do anything, and how it doesn't change your mindset and your habits that cause regain after the first year, year and a half. Is she super talented or what? Listen, I, um, I'm i just going to let her talk because what she's saying is really incredible. And some people that are contemplating getting this surgery, you need, just need to hear about these side effects and stuff that she went through. So I will shut up. Have. So the kicker with gastric bypass is once they reroute all your plumbing, they change up your insides, you get what is called malabsorption. So that means when you're eating foods and taking supplements, you're not absorbing all of the nutrients. So a big thing that they tell you is to take calcium citrate three to four times a day. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, well, why don't you just take the supplements and be done? But I'm way ahead of you. I did take the supplements. I took it as recommended by my doctor, if not more sometimes. But my body decided it wanted to be weird. If you look at my lab results and my blood work, my calcium levels are spot on. They are perfect. However, my body is acting like it's not absorbing anything. So even though my lab work and the calcium in my blood is where it should be, externally my body is having symptoms as though it's not absorbing any calcium. So one of the biggest proponents of your teeth is calcium. That's why they're crumbling, they're falling out, they're breaking, and it's just time for them to go. Another reason why I'm having issues with my teeth is pregnancy. I had my son in 2019. Having had the surgery in 2015, if you take those couple of years of not absorbing what I'm supposed to be absorbing, and then you add a pregnancy on top of that, that sped up the whole inevitable process of me having to get dentures. Some people don't know, but when you're pregnant, and that little baby is trying to grow inside of you, it's taking the nutrients and the vitamins that you're eating and consuming and using it to grow its body. That makes for a bad recipe. So in less than 24 hours, I am going to be turned into a human gummy bear. Thankfully, I have a wonderful, supportive, and loving husband who does not care what my teeth look like. He just wants me at my healthiest and happiest. I'll try to get some clips to show you guys how it goes. It's going to be very painful after, probably. I don't think I'm going to be able to talk very well, and it's going to be a while before I can actually eat food again. It's almost like the liquid phase of the gastric bypass diet which I was so happy I didn't have to do because my doctor didn't make me. But now it's coming back full circle, and I'm going to have to do it anyways. So wish me luck, and let's go. So. so I don't know about you. There's just something really infectious about a person with confidence. And in another video I saw, I believe she said that at, at her highest, she got up in the 400s, right? 
So she legitimately needed this surgery, and this surgery is something that I can totally understand for somebody that's in that situation where their health is literally at an immediate danger type situation, you know? But I'm just amazed by her confidence. She sounds like she is a movie star to me. So let's see what she looks like post-surgery here. This is where they just took out her, uh, her chompers. Oh, my wife just got all of her teeth ripped out. Mm -hmm. And this is the aftermath. <laughs> Babe, take a drink. <laughs> Come on, take a drink. Well, take your medicine. It's a gummy bear. <laughs> <laughs> so last night i posted my before and after pictures and the internet went crazy about 80 to 90 percent of everybody said oh i've experienced the same thing Gastric bypass surgery has messed it up my teeth too. And then like 10 to 20% of people were saying, well, obviously you didn't take care of them. Obviously this, obviously that. There are two types of people. The people who think they know what goes on in other people's lives. And then there's the type of people who have experienced the exact same things for the exact same reasons. But it's okay. You can hate me. You can love me. It's okay. We can all be friends at the end of the day. We don't have to agree. We can agree to disagree and still be nice to each other. And that's the great thing about social media. You don't know me. I don't know you. But we can still be nice to each other if we disagree on something. So that's it for now. It's day two. I'm going to go take more drugs, eat more cold stuff, and try to stop hurting. Hey, guys. So day four is very hard to talk. But those chompers do look beautiful, don't they? I uh, I think when people get uh, veneers or dentures, I think they always look beautiful. <laughs> look, she looks gorgeous. All right, I'll, let's see what she has to say. I don't know if you can understand me. It still hurts a lot. It's going to be a long journey to get to where I need to be. <laughs> but I already knew that going in. So I got a lot of response about my picture. And I'm going to be posting some of the responses of other people who are experiencing the same thing that I have. Now, you may not believe me. So tomorrow I'm going to be showing you literally it was six straight minutes. Oh, my goodness. So tomorrow I'm going to show you guys it was literally six straight minutes of her video where it's her scrolling through an unbelievably long list of people that had the exact same problem. They don't tell you that in five to ten years you're ultimately going to have tooth issues. Probably because a lot of people have tooth issues as they get older anyway, but we'll talk about that on a walk someday. But anyway, why don't you grab your shoes? Let's go for a walk. Hey, it's Jesse. Happy Easter Sunday. I hope you're having a wonderful day with your family. If you're spending this Easter alone, I'd like to challenge you to find all the Easter eggs I hide throughout my walk. At the end, leave a comment about how many Easter eggs you found. Guys, we have four rules around here. Number one, we walk every day. Number two, we drink water every day. And number three, we avoid sugar every day. Rule number four is if you break one of the three rules I already mentioned, then you simply obey the other two. I call it the two-thirds rule. Happy Easter, and don't forget to tell me how many eggs you found in the comments. Good luck. Guys, if you don't mind, please check out Bariatric Fitness's YouTube channel. She is amazing. Subscribe and check out all of her videos. You won't be disappointed. Thanks a million. So I hope you guys are having a good day. Today I uh, was watching some 
YouTube videos that were on my feed. I didn't necessarily reach for them. They kind of reached for me and I grabbed them as they came by. And a lot of them were talking about how, you know, water is neither here nor there when it comes to, uh, you know, how, how your body looks and, and your fitness level and your weight. And I just couldn't agree more. Um, when you're drinking a lot of the real sweet fruit juices that are out there, and you're drinking a lot of like things like high C, uh, you know, flavored drinks, if you will, and then soda. If you were to substitute that for water, you're just going to be in much in a much better spot, no doubt about it. It's extremely windy. So I want you to think about the three pillars of our little diet and exercise routine. If you look at them all individually, they are all so weak that they barely will make a dent in your health, let alone your weight. So if you just drink a ton of water, which many of us do, and even if you drink nothing but water, it's probably not going to help you lose a million pounds. But... Uh, but if you combine that with the fact that you're not drinking soda or, or you know, chocolate milk or something sweet that's going to be, you know, high in calories, then all of a sudden it, it, it does a little better than average, right? But again, by itself, not necessarily something that's going to change your body weight too, too much. But if we then combine the fact that you're avoiding soda by drinking water... And then combine that with a walk. Again, individually by itself, if you were to walk 20 or 30 minutes a day, it's not necessarily going to make a huge, huge change to your weight. Otherwise, every single mailman out there would be very, very skinny. And while many of them are in really good shape, they're not necessarily in the best of shape. And they walk all the time. But again, imagine you're avoiding the soda, you're drinking nothing but water, and now you're walking each and every day compared to not walking at all, okay? Now, we also take away sugar. So in addition to avoiding the soda, which now we're drinking water, we also get rid of the candy bars and the pastries and the sweet drinks and the milkshakes, right? And we slowly but surely give ourselves a game plan for success and all you have to do is use your imagination and rewind the years back starting from your early 20s if you had been walking for a half hour each day from then until now do you think you would be the size and weight that you are right now I say no if you would have avoided all of those sweet drinks and sweet foods and stuff and been drinking a ton of water, would you be in the spot you are now? Because nobody's gaining a ton of weight drinking water, you know? Nobody's gaining a ton of weight walking all the time. And I just don't believe that a lot of people are even giving walking a try because no matter what route I take in the neighborhood, nobody's out here but you and I. And I'm gonna start saying you and I because I have a feeling some of you are actually starting to take walks. You know, you can baby step into walking just as easy as you can baby step in a lot of different things. You can start by taking a walk three or four houses down your street, turning right around and walking back. That'll take you a whole minute and a half and it's a small, easy thing to do, but you could totally start that right away, right? With water. If you can't stand drinking water, just give yourself a little assignment. You know, hey, every day at 10, at noon and at five, I'm gonna try my darndest to just guzzle a bottle of water as quickly as I can so I'm not focusing on the lack of taste that it has, right? 
because some people genuinely get caught up in their work and don't stay hydrated. It's not necessarily that they're drinking sodas or sweetened coffees or teas. It, it might simply be that they're just a little too busy to take some time to drink some water. My thinking is stay hydrated, drink the water. Because if you're fully hydrated, you're gonna have more energy than if you're constantly dehydrated. And if I'm trying to get you to walk with me every single day, I need you to have a certain level of energy. You know, it would be really easy to quit. When I was in the grocery store the last time, there were these cherry turnovers. And right next to the four pack of cherry turnovers in the bakery, there was a four pack of apple turnovers. And there has been many a bad day in my life where I've decided to make it better by grabbing one of those four packs of apple turnovers. And would you believe it if I told you that I never went home and just had one turnover? No. Instead, I would go home and have two, and then I would wake up the next morning and have one with the regular breakfast I normally ate, and by midday, that fourth turnover was gone. So we're talking within a 12-hour period, not only am I eating my normal meals, but I devoured basically a four-pack of turnovers and these turnovers are pretty good size you know and so you just have to ask yourself if our hero Jesse can go through these moments of weakness aren't I going to go through these moments of weakness yes you already do and we both know that you do so the main thing is is on those days what I would do is I would say well I've already been eating this uh, sweet apple turnover I'm gonna have some sweet tea to wash it down with and you just end up compounding the problem and making it worse you know if I would have just obeyed the two-thirds rule I could have at least walked one of those turnovers off you know hi guys he's doing um I wonder if there's some other YouTubers that walk. One of my favorite YouTubers is Dan. I know him as Dan at I Allegedly. That's the name of his channel, I Allegedly. I like watching Dan because Dan strikes me as like your uncle, right? Everybody's uncle. He's always got great things to talk about. He has some advertisers that he does commercials for. And I'm hoping that if I'm ever blessed to have commercial opportunities that are legit, I'm hoping that they're ones that kind of blend in nicely with what I do. For example, I have this headset, or it's not a headset, but it's a personal air conditioner. And it's like a little fan that fits around your neck, but it actually has an ice cold little spot on it. And it's called the Coolify. Would absolutely love to do commercials for that because it truly is a really neat little product. Now there are moments here in the Arizona weather where when it's 115 out, even if you wear that Coolify, it doesn't do anything because the rest of your body is just hit by the sun and, and feels like you're in an oven, you know? But it is a cool little product. So I'm walking up to a park called Country Gables Park. And Country Gables Park is a park that I've grown up with my whole life. And this is that park. Now that road over there is Country Gables Road. This road is called Banff. And this park is a park that I've known about since I was about four or five years old. Keep in mind, I'm 47 now. So we're talking this park has been a part of my life forever. Now, Country Gables Road runs parallel to Banff. And if you were to look down and count the houses over there, it's about eight or nine houses. I think it's even 10 houses, okay? And if you see the end of the park, it's really, really far out there, okay? Now, the reason that I showed you that 
is I'm going to take you through what's kind of like a little simulation or proof that we live in a simulation. Because technically speaking, the houses down there are, it's like 10 houses down. That's how wide the park is. That is how wide the park is. Just remember that. We're going to come back to this park here in a couple of minutes, okay? Right now, we're just going to go down to the end of the street here. But keep in mind, Country Gables Road runs parallel to Banff. And the end of the park is about 10 houses that way. So it's a pretty decent trek to the end of the park, okay? I love watching videos on YouTube about, you know, are we living in a simulation? And, uh, you know, are these uh, interdimensional beings or are they aliens from another planet? Kind of tripped me out when all of a sudden we weren't talking about aliens, but about interdimensional beings, because it's like, what? Very crazy stuff. <laughs> Sometimes it's a uh, sometimes it's a real bummer when you want to lose weight and it's just one of those things that it's just so challenging because there's multiple things that pull at you. Number 1, sometimes we want to be lazy. So even something as small and as simple as going on a walk might be challenge, especially if it's one of those days where maybe we're feeling a little bummed out or depressed, right? And for some people, when that happens, it's really hard for them to get out of the bed. Now, for me, I have those same sad feelings, but what I try to do is I try to say, okay, I'm not feeling the best. Let's go outside and let's go for a walk. And I think if you do that, it'll help your mental health and help your balance, balance all your chemicals in your noggin, and it would be a good thing for you. I also think that when you're bummed out and feeling lazy and you're watching movies, it's real easy at that time to say, you know what, I'm gonna make me some buttered popcorn. And then before you know it, you're throwing M&Ms in the buttered popcorn, you're eating ice cream and there goes your diet, you know? Every single time, this is what happens to people. But you gotta really think about it. We're really trying to get our lives back in under control. When we were teenagers, we could eat anything we want and we never gained weight. And all the experts said, say, it's we, well, it's because when you're a teenager, your metabolism is running really high. And you know, you've got this great metabolism where you can eat whatever you want and you won't gain a pound. I really don't know if that's true or not. I mean, did we really walk a lot and, and were we naturally skinny because we were young? Or were we young and naturally skinny because we were walking a lot and we were active? You know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Okay, this road, guys, this road is Banff. And remember, the park ran parallel on the other road, which was called Country Gables. And from one side of the park down to the end, it was about 10 houses. Now I'm gonna show you a little simulation, or at least something I like to call a simulation, but it's probably no big deal at all. So here's the beginning of Banff. We're gonna go down to this next road here, and what we're ultimately, ultimately gonna do is we're gonna come up on the opposite end of the park, okay? But what I want you to notice is that right here, we are passing through one house. It's this pink house with this pink fence. Next, we're gonna pass this house that looks kind of like it's straight out of New Mexico. I don't remember the names of these houses, but they're kind of flat roofed, kind of interesting looking. But this is the second house. This third house, we're going to call this mocha or beige colored, right? Kind of neat. But you can see that I've only walked down three houses. Okay. This fourth house is navy blue. I've never seen a navy blue house, have you? 
I mean, I'd be lying. I technically have seen this navy blue house for the last couple years, but it wasn't always navy blue like it is now. But anyway, that's four houses. Now, here we are to Country Gables Road. Now, I want you to notice something. This wasn't a completely straight line. It kind of curved and did like an elbow macaroni, right? But here we are on Country Gables Road. And we're gonna walk down one road back, kind of the way we came when we were coming up Banff. I find this amazing because one day I just noticed it. And now every single time that I walk up this park, it blows me away. So remember, Banff Road, we come up basically four houses. We come back one road this way, okay? This is once again, Country Gables Road. You'll notice that it bends now because it was only straight for the park. But we're gonna go back to that park right now. Now remember, we just came this way four houses. Now we're gonna go back this way about three houses, right? So here's one house. If you guys really think about this, it's kind of fascinating. But again, if I, if I were up in the air looking downward, it probably would make more sense. Here's house number two. And finally, here's house number three. We're gonna cross the street, hopefully without getting hit by any cars. Now, we're gonna go down this road right here. Keep in mind, that was Banff Road. We came up four houses, we came back three. Now we're coming this way back towards that Country Gables Park. And you'll notice the uh, road even curves, but it doesn't curve away from, it curves back towards. Which would make my brain think that if there was a park over here, it wouldn't be 10 houses down. It would be like maybe two houses, maybe three. And it would be a very small park. It would be almost more like a green belt based on the geometry and the distance that I just traveled. So let's see how this works out. I hope, I hope it's something you guys find interesting. Somehow we got way over here on the opposite side of the park. And if you count all those houses, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Somehow we came all this way. And I'm sorry, but I find that fascinating. How the heck did that happen? Anyway, if you guys found that neat, maybe you can put a comment in the, uh, in the comment section. If you thought that was silly and stupid and a waste of your time, well, congratulations, you wasted some time with me. But I walk that every day. And again, I know that if I was up high in the sky looking downward from a helicopter, I'm sure it would make total sense, right? I'm sure there's no huge mystery here. But when you're walking it, the way my brain perceives it, it really does kind of seem like it's straight out of a video game. Because video games are like that. You'll be going through a neighborhood on like a one-person shooter game or whatever they're called. I haven't played them in so long. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. But you'll turn a couple corners and all of a sudden you're back at a place where it's like, wait a minute, I went farther this way than I did this way. How am I back here? And that's what happens here in real life. So yeah, if you're ever in Phoenix, Arizona, why don't you come out here to Country Gables Park, walk up Banff Road, go to the next road over, come back down and walk the other side, and it'll just amaze you because there's no way we walked this far over. Absolutely no way. And this is called Port Royale. Port Royale and 32nd Drive. I just find that amazing. So. It's kind of funny because when I look at my stomach and certain members of my family will kind of poke fun at my gut because it really has gotten a little bit out of hand here. Again, I was trying to do this channel quicker, but
but I kept having troubles with cameras, with computers, with, you know, timing, with my job, with recovering from my surgery. And all these little delays just equated to my body getting chunkier and chunkier and chunkier. But I'm telling you, honest to goodness, you are going to see me transform. And if you're willing to join me and copy what I'm doing in just 90 days, you're going to end up thanking me and saying it was the best thing that I ever did. So let's go over the plan. We're going to drink water every single day. Why, Jesse, would I want to drink water every single day? Because you drink water every single day, it enables you to drink a soda whenever you want. But again, whenever you want does not mean you get to drink multiple sodas multiple days. It means you have a soda once in a blue moon, okay? Because you drink water all the time. Because you walk every single day, it means that, yeah, believe it or not, you can take a day off of walking whenever you want, okay? because you're going to anyway. And because you avoid sugar all the time, yeah, you can have a piece of cake and a Snicker bar and a Kit Kat whenever you want. There's freedom with this. It's, it's always been in your hands. You've always had this choice. But here's the thing. When you were 20, you still had a majority of your life to make up for it, right? When you're my age, 47, or maybe you're even a couple years older, the odds are you and I have already passed the halfway point in our life. And the odds are if we don't try to eat better, that life is gonna be shortened. But I can tell you one thing, I snuck onto the scale and I'm still 185 pounds, which is awesome. And I'll tell you why. I would have loved to have been 179, but it's good that I'm 185 because some of you are gonna be stepping on the scale after a week, and guess what? You're still gonna weigh exactly the same. This diet, just like so many other diets, aren't miracles that happen overnight. What we're doing is we're letting our stomach get used to going longer periods of time without eating. We're used to eating duller foods, which is really gonna benefit you because what it means is when you eat anything like cornflakes or Cheerios, you're gonna be able to taste the sugars that are in them and it's gonna blow you away. We need to get to day 15 or 21 simply to get you addicted to the routine of it all, okay? If you dislike water, that's fine, but I still need you to drink water and avoid the sweet stuff. What you're gonna find immediately is that you wake up and your morning breath's not too bad. What a weird thing to say. You're gonna notice that your teeth aren't so furry and your morning breath is not that bad. Does that mean I'm telling you not to brush your teeth? Of course not. You should brush your teeth twice a day, if not more, okay? But the reality is you're gonna wake up in the morning and you're gonna notice right away that that film and gunk in your mouth is about half what it used to be, okay? And every time you drink water, Pretty soon you're not gonna see it as something that you guzzle down like you would a soft drink. You're gonna enjoy water and see it as a fuel to your body. It's gonna energize you. And when you go outside for your walk, you're gonna feel the sun on your skin. You're gonna feel the breeze in your face. And you're gonna really start enjoying life. When you're out here, you're also gonna work on the mental aspect of your, of your life, the me your mental game, so to speak. You need to be able to detox from your job and detox from society and just kind of learn to breathe through your nose, take in your problems, and see if you can ask your brain to come with a, up with a solution. And then just ponder and think about that as you're walking. You're not thinking about the problem, because that's negative. You're thinking about the solution. And that's a positive thing, right? So that's what you're gonna be doing with me for the next 90 days, and it's gonna change your life, okay? Every week, you're gonna start seeing changes. For example, right now, I'm wearing a pair of shorts that I can't buckle them, but I can zip them up enough where I can wear them, okay? So I'm literally wearing shorts that won't buckle up while trying to teach people around the country or even around the world how to lose weight quickly and easily. Yeah, and they won't listen to you. 
And odds are nobody will watch your videos for a year or two. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? I'm doing this because either way, whether I have the camera or not, I'm walking. But if you walk with me, if you copy me, and if you watch long enough, pretty soon you're going to start to see a couple of comments pop up where people say, hey, I'm going to give it a try. Okay? I would love for you to commit to 90 days because I think you'll be amazed. But right off the bat, at least try to commit for 15 or 21 days so we can, again, try to make it habit forming in your life. By the time it's habit forming, you'll find yourself waking up and wanting to go for a walk. And here's something else I'd like you to try. Don't wake up and eat a meal and then take your walk. Not that that's bad. If you do it that way, that's fine. But if you wake up and you're not starving, take your walk first and then eat your meal. Then eat your meal. And we're not nocturnal. Even though a lot of us are night owls, we're not supposed to be nocturnal. And this is one of those things that I still have a challenge with, but I challenge you, because maybe you can help motivate me. I think we should try eating just during the daylight hours. I've seen some videos on it that if you can just avoid eating in the early morning before the sun's up, and avoid eating late in the evening when the sun's down, well, it can really help get your system kind of back on track and make it where your metabolism kind of gets back to normal, okay? Ultimately, we want to get to the point where in the morning when we wake up and take our walk and get home, we want to get to the point where sometimes we actually skip breakfast, not because we're fasting and not because we're starving but trying to fight it, but because we just don't notice it. You know you're really starting to enjoy your walks if you're starting to take extra credit. And you can plan that in your day as well by walking immediately when you get home from your job. Okay.